All right, so let me write down some code for this algorithm. It's pretty straightforward, but it's so straightforward we can be completely explicit and write pseudocode. There's a few different ways to implement this algorithm. I'll show you my favorite. But textbook has a different favorite. And at that point, we should be done. Uh, we could do an actual example, maybe. We're going to do it on a direct, uh, sorry, an undirected graph, but this algorithm works just as well on directed and undirected graphs. Okay, so there's an undirected graph. Uh, we, we're given some start vertex s, and we're given the graph by being given the adjacency lists. So you could iterate over the vertices of that thing. Given a vertex, you can list all the edges you can reach in one step. <coughs> And then the top of the algorithm is just some initialization. The basic structure is we have this thing called the frontier, which is uh, what we just reached on the previous level. Uh, I think that's going to be level i minus 1. Just don't want to make an index error. So these are going to be all the things you can reach using exactly i minus 1 moves. And then next is going to be all the things you can reach in I moves. Okay, so to get started, what we know is S. S is what you can reach in zero moves. So we set the level of S to be zero. That's the first line of the code. There's this other thing called a parent. We'll worry about that later. It's, it's optional. It's just it gives us some other fun structure. Uh, we set I to be one because we just finished level zero. Frontier at, of uh, what you can reach in level 0 is just s itself. So we're going to put that in a list. That is level 0. i equals 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. All good. And then we're going to iterate. And this is going to be looking at the, the end of the iteration is to increment i. So you could also call this a for loop, except we don't know when it's going to end. So it's easier to think of i incrementing each step, not knowing when we're going to stop. We're going to stop whenever we run out of nodes. So whenever. Frontier is a non-empty list. And the bulk of the work here is computing what the next level is. That's called next. It's going to be level i. We do some computation. Eventually, we have what's on the next level. Then we set frontier to next. So because that's our new level, we increment i. And that invariant of, of frontier being level i minus 1 is preserved right after here. And then we just keep going until we run out of nodes. Uh, how do we compute next? Well, we look at every node in the frontier, and we look at all the nodes you can reach from those nodes. So every node u in the frontier, and then we look at, uh, so this means there's an edge from u to v. So the picture. We look at all the edges from all the frontier nodes where you can go. And then the key thing is we check for duplicates. We see, have we seen this node before? If we have, we would have set its level to be something. If we haven't seen it, it will not be in the level hash table the level dictionary. And so if it's not in there, uh, we'll put it in there and add it to the next layer. So that's how you avoid duplicates. You set its level to make sure you will never visit it again. You add it to the next frontier. You iterate, you're done. Okay. Uh, this is one version of what you might call breadth first search. And it achieves this goal, visiting all the nodes reachable from s in linear time. Let's see how it works on a real example. So first frontier is this thing. Uh, frontier just has the node s. So we just look at s, and we look at all the edges from s. We get a and x. So those get added to the next frontier. Uh, maybe before I go too far, let me switch colors. Multimedia here. All right, so here's level 1. 
All of these guys have, uh, we're going to set their level to 1. They can be reached in one step. That's pretty clear. So now Frontier is A and X. We go to the, that's what next becomes, then Frontier becomes next. And so we look at all the edges from A. Uh, that's going to be S and Z. S, we've already looked at it. It already has a level set, so we ignore that. So we look at Z. Z does not have a level indicated here. So we're going to set it to I, which happens to be 2 at this point. And we look at X. It has neighbors S, D, and C. We look at S again. We say, oh, we've already seen that yet again. So we're worried about this taking a lot of time, because we look at S three times in total. Uh, then we look at D. D hasn't been set, so we set it to 2. C hasn't been set, so we set it to 2. So the frontier at level 2 is that. Okay, then we look at all the neighbors of Z. There's A. A has already been set. Look at all the neighbors of D. There's X. There's C. Those have been set. There's F. This one gets added. Uh, then we look at C. There's X. That's been done. D has been done. F's been done. V has not been done. So this becomes a frontier at level 3. Then we look at level 3. There's F. B's been done. C's been done. B's been done. We look at V. C's been done. F's been done. Nothing to add to next. Next becomes empty. Frontier becomes empty. The while loop finishes. Ta-da! We've computed. We've visited all the vertices.